Look at these cool cats back here. <laughs> What's up y'all, Alex here from Cat and Cloud coming at you with another video. One of the coolest things we do here at Cat and Cloud is we send our team members to Origin. For those of you who don't know what I mean by Origin, I'm just referring to coffee origin countries, the countries where coffee is produced. In just over three years of operating our business, we've sent over 40 of our team members to Origin and this is a pretty unique thing. Back when we first opened our business, we were thinking of different ways that we could engage our team more deeply with coffee, but also also just reward them for their hard work. And one of those ideas was to send our team to Origin. So I guess I asked a barista like, hey, tell me more about this coffee. And they're like, oh, let me tell you all about it. I've been to that farm. So that's why we send our team to Origin. Me and Mark, who's my wholesale partner in crime, recently had the opportunity to go to Origin for the first time and we got to go to Africa, specifically Kenya and Tanzania. It was freaking dope. And typically when we go to Origin, we're visiting farms, we're visiting factories, and we're cupping coffee and just getting to know the place where the coffee comes from. I have a ton of footage, so I'm gonna be splitting the Africa videos up into a series. In this first video of the series, I'm going to show you what a Kenyan coffee factory looks like and walk you through the steps involved in producing coffee from A to Z. Here we go. First off, real quick, did you know that coffee is actually a fruit that grows on an evergreen shrub and the coffee beans that we consume are the seeds of that fruit? <laughs> if not, welcome to the wild world of coffee. It's crazy out there. So the whole process starts when farmers begin to pick the coffee fruit, which I'll refer to from now on as coffee cherries, from their plants when they're ripe. They then load the cherries that they've picked into sacks and walk or drive them to the nearest factory to be processed. Depending on the size of the operation, these bags can be as heavy as 200 pounds. At many of the factories we visited, the cherry receiving area is actually at the top of a hill. This makes it so they can use a gravity feed of water to carry the coffee from one stage of the process to the next. I have this image just seared into my mind of watching all these little old ladies haul these huge sacks of coffee cherries up this crazy hill to get to the top of the factory. Really made me feel like a lazy piece of trash as I was walking up the hill beside them. Just, whew, man, this hill, huh? Hi. Once they make it to the top of the hill, they dump their cherries onto these big mats on the ground and begin sorting through them by hand, looking for ripeness, disease, and any other potential defects. At a few of the factories we visited, they then float the cherries. So this involves first dumping the cherries into tubs of water. The cherries that float to the top are of lower quality and they separate those into one bag. And the cherries that sink are higher quality and they put those in another bag. Floating is actually a very unusual thing in Kenyan coffee processing. It's not the norm. So this factory we visited this year versus last year, their quality has improved dramatically, uh, mostly due to floating. <laughs> they then bring their bags of sorted cherries to the weighing station where the farmer puts the bag on a scale and weighs the coffee. The factory worker then logs the weight and gives the farmer a receipt for the amount of coffee that they weighed. And the digitalization of factories that you see here is also a pretty new thing. Before they were entering all this data into a computer and printing out receipts, they were just handwriting everything in these giant books and keeping track of it that way. So factories are really starting to embrace more technology into their process. Once the weighing process is complete, the farmer then dumps their cherries into a giant hopper where they get mixed in with all the other cherries from that day. Water then flushes the cherries out of the hopper and brings them down a series of chutes where they eventually land in the mechanical depulper. As the cherry passes through the depulper, the skin and flesh of the cherry are removed from the coffee seed. So there's one chute that has the coffee seeds coming out of the depulper, and there's another chute that has the pulp. So once the coffee has been depulped, it continues to flow down these chutes until it lands in these giant fermentation tanks.
Most of these factories are actually doing two fermentations. In the first fermentation, the depulped coffee cherry is essentially just sitting in the tank for 12 to 24 hours. And after this first fermentation, the coffee is washed thoroughly to remove as much mucilage as possible. And then there's a second fermentation, just repeating the first one, just 12 to 24 hours. And then finally, a second wash to remove any remaining mucilage that remains on the coffee seed. And all of this processing, all this washing, results in a very, very clean cup of coffee that is very characteristic of the Kenyan coffee profile. Once the fermentation process is complete, the parchment is laid out on raised beds to dry, typically for seven to 10 days. Once dry, the parchment is then bagged and brought to yet another mill, which is called a dry mill, for further processing and eventually export. <laughs> And so that, my friends, is how Kenyan coffee is processed at the factory from A to Z. I hope this video has shown you that coffee is an incredible beverage that involves so much complexity and so many steps. And my challenge for you is that you make it a point to ponder this complexity the next time you drink a cup of coffee. Every time you waste a bean, just think of that old lady that dragged it up the hill just for you, just for you. It's also important to note that different factories in different countries process coffee just a little bit differently depending on what works best for them and also what natural resources are the most available. So do me a favor, if you think I got something wrong in this video, please comment below and just talk to me about it and maybe we can figure it out together. Stay tuned for more videos about this Africa origin trip. I definitely want to explain more about how the Kenyan coffee system works overall and I'll also be making a video about the safari we went on in Tanzania which was freaking insane. All right y'all that's all I got for you today. Alex out. Time for the flight.